Here's a little history from back in the day. Early in the life of Bloomington's Square Reservoir, Water Week was celebrated in part with a teen dance on the roof. The cement pad on a hill was also home to several tennis courts. This is a key part of Bloomington's water distribution system. We're standing on top of one of Bloomington's water towers, and though they're big, the design is actually really simple. There's a bunch of water kept up in the air, and the pressure of gravity keeps the lines charged, so when you open your faucet, you've always got water. The water towers collect extra water from the system when faucets and valves are closed. When demand is high, water leaves the tower. If we have a major problem, you'll always have your water running. Below the giant structures, it's peaceful and quiet because there are no pumps directly connected to them. The great thing about water is it operates primarily on gravity. So once we've filled up the towers and the distribution system, you're exactly right. If we had a complete power failure here in the city, your water would still run. Pump stations push fresh water into the lines. Jerry Neighbors, a senior utility operator. He works in the field to keep the entire system running. They have their computer system set up at the levels that they want the towers at. Then they'll call for a pump, they'll run the pump, usually in auto, until it reaches that level and shut off. You're not talking about just one person with a tap. You have 24,000 plus service connections that are opening and closing taps all the time during the day. When the system's at capacity, 40 million gallons from first to last drop. 10 million gallons in the pipes alone. Bloomington's biggest reservoir can hold as much as 10 million gallons. Here's a quick splash. Twice a year, utility operators climb to the top of both water towers to change the light bulbs in the aviation beacons. Once you're on harness, up the ladder and on top of the tank, the actual bulb change is a lot like changing one in your garage. It just takes a bit more to get there. Visual aviation maps include things like Bloomington's water towers to help pilots find their way as they fly. Visual navigation is used by many private pilots as they navigate using landmarks. So let's take it to the streets. I'm Reed Erickson with the city of Bloomington. Almost all of Bloomington's water distribution is underground. We try to um, exercise them so that if there is a fire or a main break, that if we need to isolate or shut the water down, that we can uh, get on the valve and it'll be operational, um, especially in the wintertime. Um, if there's ice built up or anything like that, we want to make sure that you can get on the nut, operate the valve so that you can shut her down. When you're trying to find a valve cap the size of a paint can, GPS comes in handy. Set it on there, you just hit occupy, and it stores the coordinates for that valve, which we then use to update the GIS and so we can correct our maps. And Mainly we do it for uh, our locators. Sure for uh, whenever they're digging in the street or installing cable or something. They have more accurate maps to go off, so nothing, none of our stuff gets hit. GPS technology updates maps, crews track valves, manholes, fire hydrants, and water mains. They get covered up and uh, you have no, you'd have no idea there was one there unless, unless we'd taken a shot of it in the summer. Grass, snow, even pavement can easily hide water infrastructure. I think our response time is a lot quicker finding things than it used to be. The GIS or Geographical Information System helps utility operators, even fire crews, locate resources. Especially in some intersections, it can be three, four, five valves in one intersection, so you need to keep track of which valve is which. Icebergs really form in water towers during the winter. Crews test overflows on the reservoirs and water towers. The parks at their bases are designed to handle the small urban flood. More Bloomington Today, all about water, next. Welcome back to Bloomington Today. In blind taste test, you, Bloomington residents, pick tap water number one against bottled water. Plus, consider the price. At $2.18 per thousand gallons, it's a lot cheaper than $1.50 per gallon of bottled water. Our lab goes out and takes samples randomly throughout our distribution system. Every week, we bring them back to our lab, we test them, we look at it, we analyze it to make sure that it meets our quality standard. 
If you have any concerns about your water, the Bloomington Utilities Division wants to hear about it. Bloomington's water emergency line is 952-563-4905. That number is staffed 24 hours per day, 7 days a week. In the Works at Public Works, a new utility billing software program that makes information on water use easier to get at. The software replaced a 40-year-old legacy system, which was uh, originally ran on a mainframe, uh, very dated software package. Uh, it had no customer uh, web interface. It uh, was functionality and features of it were very dated, and uh, we were overdue in terms of replacing the the whole package, the software package. Bloomington's new system will soon include online and automatic bill pay. The web interface allows them to to pay their bill, to review their consumption history. Um, and to eventually, when we uh, implement some of the other features of it, they'll be able to request uh, service through the web interface. Water keeps life in Bloomington affordable in ways you might not realize. The ISO is the Insurance Services Organization, and what they do is, is they rate a community's fire protection capabilities and then um, basically uh, provide those, that rating service to insurance companies so insurance companies can um, um, set your rates based upon those fire protection capabilities. And they measure several things and, and one of the things they, they measure um, that is really important is the water system. Bloomington's water helps keep your insurance rates low and protects home and businesses from fires and other public emergencies. The city is covered by a, a really an excellent water system. Um, it's gridded and that allows the system to maintain pressure. Um, we've got the right size uh, mains in the ground so it allows us to get enough volume. And from a firefighting perspective, the ability to access water quickly and, and, and efficiently really makes a difference on our ability to get water on the fire which allows us to minimize damage and, and protect people's lives. Utility crews check hydrants on a schedule to make sure they work when they're needed. For the fire department, if they need to operate the hydrant, they know that it's working. Um, we know that it's working in the, in the spring, the, in the fall is when we, we operate them. So in the winter time, when things freeze up, that we all, we know that uh, the, the hydrant's working and, and, and if there is an emergency that uh, uh, it's, it's ready to go. Tap water's here for you around the clock. National Drinking Water Week is May 2nd through the 8th, and considering the unique relationship fire protection and drinking water has together, it seems only fitting that arson awareness is that same week. If you have questions about your water, would like more information on summer road construction projects, or are interested in joining a softball league, check out the City of Bloomington's website at www.ci.bloomington.mn.us. On the front page this week, street legal. Before you purchase or ride your scooter, check out the rules of the road and celebrate Older Americans Month in May. Those stories and so much more is online right now at www.ci.bloomington.mn.us. This is Bloomington Today, a presentation of the City of Bloomington's Communications Division, and I'm Reed Erickson.